When I was living in Bangkok, I had the opportunity to make uh, several trips out to uh, Laos and Cambodia, and I, uh, later I lived in Cambodia and was able to take a good look round there. But one thing which both of those countries have in common is the amount of landmines and unexploded devices there. Because during the Vietnam War, the Americans carpet bombed most of Laos and quite a big bit of Cambodia uh, secretly, and um, I'm not quite sure why, but there haven't been that many efforts to clean up the uh, what they've dropped in uh, in especially in southern Laos and in eastern Cambodia, which is very sad, because some of the places that they've dropped these uh, cluster bombs there is uh, are the really really beautiful spots particularly around an old Khmer temple in the south of Lao called Wat Pu. And I went to see this temple, oh, it must have been about a year ago, and um, I went up to the main temple, which is absolutely wonderful, dating from the 6th century, with the carvings of Vishnu uh, fighting demons and so on. And then I heard that there was another, much smaller temple, maybe even dating from as far back as the 3rd century, a couple of kilometres just to the west of this temple. That was all I knew, just that it was to the west. So, anyway, I struck out through the jungle, trying to find this temple, which would... I found it in the end after asking directions from a few farmers, but it was really nothing more than a couple of um, uh, Shiva lingams, which are big phallic-shaped stones, which they, the ancient Khmer seemed to have just put at different places, where they, which they found along the Mekong. I was <laughs> trying to take a photo of these lingams, and I had to take a step backwards, and just behind me was one of these old cluster bombs sticking out the ground. And God knows how many more of them there would have been in the jungle around there. But I was really quite shaken by that, and I had to sit down and have a cigarette before I could move on and try and get back to the path. And then later on in Cambodia, because uh, the civil war is still kind of... Uh, sputtering in the far west of the country and people are recycling the landmines there now which were the weapon of choice there in the civil war but um they recycle them i mean that they'll go into old battlefields and dig up the mines and then just carry them and lay them somewhere else and it's not just the army which does this but um just villagers who live in mined areas um they'll put mines on their garden paths at night to keep robbers away or if they have a particularly productive fruit tree, like especially the trees which uh, make palm wine, then you'll often find a landmine at the bottom of one of those at night. And uh, the mines can get washed around by the river if there's a, a big rainstorm. It's very common to find uh, landmines just at the banks of rivers and so on. And although there are lots and lots of NGOs in Cambodia trying to uh, make people aware of dangers of mines, it's still really difficult to get that across, because there's a real, there's a big kind of feeling that it could never happen to me, that you'll never get blown up by a mine. And in almost every village, there's um, a couple of mines lying about, and little children, if they've, well, like, like any child, they'd want to see explosions, and if they don't have televisions and be able to see them there, they're liable to just throw rocks at a mine or poke it with a stick until it goes up. Or, and also quite in quite a few places, uh, in Laos as well, uh, the the breadwinners of the family, the fathers, may even be uh, defusing the mines themselves to sell as scrap metal, which is very dangerous, and that only only makes people well, it people don't really realise how dangerous mines are if if their father is likely to have a mine that he's dismantling. In the in the basement kind of thing, but in some places in eastern Laos, I've never actually seen this, but I've I've met people who've been there and seen it. The carpet bombing was so intense that it took away all the trees and all the vegetation, so that the only things the villagers had to build their houses with were pieces of shrapnel and old bomb casings, and you can see entire villages made out of war debris. It sounds incredible. So. As crazy as it might sound, people have actually been able to make a living out of the mines in this devastation, and they've been able to actually turn it uh, into something they can use for their own benefit. <laughs>